guys and welcome to my video. It's been a while since I've done a PC centric rig so I thought it was time to revisit that area and I put a lot of time and effort into going through loads of different components and I've come up with a list of components that would be absolutely perfect if you're after a luxury rig. Now a luxury rig is not just a gaming machine, it's primarily a gaming machine but it can do so much more than just gaming. It can be your photo editing suite, it can be your dream multi-monitor setup. This luxury rig will run absolutely anything you can throw at it. Sure, it's not the best you can get out there, but if you spend any more, then you're really not going to be getting much more for your money. So the first piece of the puzzle is the case. Now, obviously, a computer case is very, very personal, and it's going to take a personal touch to win you over. Now, the one that really stands out for me is the Corsair 500R. It's beautifully well made, it's available in black or white, and it's got plenty of space for all your components without being too big. It's got a nice big window so you can see all your components inside, especially if you add LEDs at a later date. And it's very well made and it will last you a long, long time. Corset are very, very careful when designing their cases and as such the finer details are really good, like the hard drive cages are really, really nice and there's plenty of room behind the motherboard to arrange all your cables so when you come to shut that door there's actually going to be a fair gap for you to fit all your cables in which is a really nice feature of Corsair cases. I'd really recommend the Corsair 500R case. Now while the case is the centrepiece of your system, it's the motherboard that's the real base of your system. And the motherboard I've chosen is by Gigabyte. It's the GAZ77X-UD5H. Now this motherboard's been very well reviewed by all sorts of different reviewers. Um, it performs really well, it's got plenty of ports on it, it's got plenty of display options as well but we'll be adding a graphics card later so that won't matter too much anyway but it's really durable, it's got plenty of options and of course it supports SLI and Crossfire so now we've got our motherboard decided, the next thing is to add a processor and I can nearly guarantee you'll be able to guess what it is it is of course the i7-377K from Intel it's absolutely fantastic processor when it comes to things like video editing and rendering, it really performs a lot better than the 3570K and in the long run, you're going to really benefit from it. And this is of course the luxury rig. So the i7-377K is of course the processor we're going to go with. Now we're going to need to add some RAM of course to this and we're going with 16 gigabytes. We're going with four lots of four gigabyte Corsair Dominator RAM. It's really well reviewed RAM, it's going to do the job really well and 16 gigabytes is going to be plenty. You can get faster RAM, but it's going to be nearly double the price. And at roughly £100 anyway, you're not going to want to spend £200 on RAM. Now, the most exciting part of the computer is, of course, the graphics card. And, of course, there are a few choices, and everyone's going to differ between AMD and NVIDIA. But currently, the best card on the market, especially from a luxury point of view, is the 7970. And the best option here is the one from XFX. It's the Double D edition with Ghost Thermal and... Hydra cell, uh, but more importantly it runs at 6000 megahertz, so it's really going to run your games really well and they're actually really quite nice looking graphics cards as well, they're very metallic, uh, they've got a fair amount of heft to them, they're quite heavy, but it's really going to look very good in your system, but more importantly it's going to perform really well. Now of course we're going to need to power this rig, now we need a power supply that's sufficient enough to run all the stuff we got on it plus allowing for upgrading later. It's quite likely to get a second card at a later date and run them in Crossfire. So we're going with an 850 watt power supply, which is more than enough, and it's the Corsair HX850. It's rated gold, so it's very efficient, and it's actually a modular power supply as well. Your case will be really nice and neat and tidy, because you can only use the cables that you need to use, and you only use the length that you need as well. So this Corsair power supply is not only efficient, not only supplies enough, power, it's going to be really nice at keeping your case nice and tidy and when you look through that window it's going to be really nice and clean. Now we're going to need some drives. Well, first off we're going to go with the optical drive. Now you could skip this if you wanted to but this is the luxury rig and so I'm going to recommend a Blu-ray drive. Now you can get a nice deal over here in the UK for a read-only one which is a light-on drive and it comes with Cyberlink 10. I did do a separate video on that if you're interested. But if you want a writer, then you're looking at nearly double the price, and a lot of them don't actually come with software. I'd only advise getting a Blu-ray writer if you know you're going to be writing Blu-ray discs, which a lot of people aren't going to be these days anyway. 
but I definitely recommend getting a Blu-ray drive just because it's very useful to have. So the Blu-ray drive I recommend is a light-on read-only drive. But over in the US there's a nice cheap LG Blu-ray writer for around 60-ish dollars. So if you live in the US I'd recommend that one instead. And as for the hard disk drives, we are without a doubt going to want an SSD in here. Now you have two choices. You're going to either want two smaller ones in RAID 0 or you're going to want one nice big 256 gigabyte one just as is. For this purpose, I've decided to go for a 256 gigabyte Samsung 840 Pro. It's a fantastic SSD, it performs really well, and it's one of the best SSDs on the market today, and it's going to mean that you'll have plenty of room for games this time, because it's a 256 gigabyte hard drive. You'll be able to fit at least 20 games on there, plus your operating system, and you'll be able to fit some programs on there as well. But of course it depends what games and what programs you're going to be putting on there. But an SSD is a must, and if you're going to be buying a luxury rig, then an SSD should be a priority. As for the standard storage space, I've gone for a 2 terabyte Western Digital Green Drive. It's not as fast as a black drive, it's not as reliable as a red drive, but it's a lot cheaper and it is more power efficient. They shouldn't fail on you. Of course you should back up your data regularly anyway, but a best large drive from a price performance perspective is definitely the two terabyte Western Digital green hard disk drive. Now there's a couple of additional things we're gonna to wanna to put in this computer. The first one of which is a CPU cooler. We've gone for the H100i. We've already got a nice overclockable processor, so we're gonna want a nice cooler that will not only keep it nice and cool when we overclock it, but it will keep it nice and quiet as well. The H100i is a fantastic cooler, offers real good value for money, believe it or not. Because it's a double radiator, it means you'll be able to get better cooling for less noise. Now the last thing we're going to want to chuck in this computer is a nice sound card. As I said in my previous video, they are actually very important and you really shouldn't skimp on one. And the one I've gone for is an Asus D1. The Asus D1 offers 7.1 surround sound, as well as some really, really nice clean audio that your ears are going to be really grateful for when you make the investment. So that is it for all the computer hardware, but of course there's one thing we've missed out and that is a copy of Windows. I wouldn't really say there's much point in going for the Pro version of Windows 8, but of course you can if you like, but for our purposes we've just gone for the basic Windows 8 64-bit OEM. Windows 8, I've said it before and I'll say it again, is the best operating system on the market today and I've even got a start menu enabled, there's third party applications out there and so my computer boots to desktop in seconds and there's a start menu to use if I want it and I never actually have to go into the Metro UI at all. I don't use any of the Windows 8 apps anymore, I just use iTunes, the only one I was using was Xbox Music but I don't actually use that anymore. So as far as I'm concerned it's just Windows 7 with a few improvements. So Windows 8 is the best operating system today. So that is actually it for the PC centric rig. This is the luxury rig. This is the rig you really are going to want and it's really going to be worth saving up for. Everything in this computer is durable. It's going to last you a long time. Obviously you will have to replace stuff eventually but the main upgrade you'll want to do is add a second graphics card in there and you can do that at a later date when the newer ones come out and you'll be able to get one of the current range extra cheap. But of course it all comes down to how much this costs. Now these components were all carefully chosen, not only from a price performance point of view, but what I think is best to go in, and while there is some stuff you may not agree with, I definitely think that if you went out and you bought all these components and put them together, or got someone to build it for you, you were definitely not going to be disappointed. So I can reveal that the PC-centric luxury rig is going to set you back £1,618.33. But if you live in the US, it's only going to cost you $2,134. So it is expensive, it's not cheap, but this is definitely the best computer you're going to be able to buy that's really well spec for the amount of money. If you start spending any more money than that, then you're really going to be getting a lot less per dollar or per pound spent. For example, the GTX Titan, while it's a fantastic card, it is better than any other card on the market today, you're actually paying a lot of money for a graphics card that doesn't actually offer you that much more than a GTX 680. Sure, it's a lot faster and will produce a lot more frames, but you don't need those frames really for anything. Maybe one day when we're running 4K monitors, but until that day we don't need it and it's going to cost you a lot more money and it's just not really worth it. It's really cool to have, but again, it's just not really worth it. So, this is the rig. 
What do you think about it? Let me know your comments below. Obviously these prices are only a guide. They were only done with one retailer. They were done with Scan Computers UK and over at Newegg in the US. So you'll be able to get it cheaper. I can more or less guarantee that if you shop around for the components. Let me know what you thought and I will see you next time with my next video. Thank you for watching.